Uh, welcome to lesson number 39 of the course on industrial automation control. This is the penultimate lesson and therefore, uh, while we are ending the course, we need to be aware of at least some of the other, some of the things that we have not done <coughs> in detail. In this course, we have mainly talked about the lower levels of automation, namely uh, level 0, where we have talked about sensors and actuators in some detail and level 1, which is automatic control and sequence control. But as we uh, have discussed, there are higher levels of automation systems. There is level 2, level 3 and conceivably level 4. So, in today's lesson, we will try to take at, take a look at, it is it's, it's going to be a brief look, but take it nevertheless take a look at what makes level 2, 3 and 4, uh, so that we have some idea about them and uh, get a more complete uh, picture. This is, this is about industrial automation, not so much about, uh, it turns out that the higher levels are more, more concerned with in, in information technology and software rather than you know, automation technology and hardware. So, therefore, they, 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 they have not been treated in detail in this course. So, here we go. <coughs> so, uh, as usual instruction objectives and name the higher layers. So, you, the, the, the student should be able to at least name the higher layers and name the major functions of each of the higher layers, level 2, 3 and 4 automation and describe the many of them, you know, there are basic technologies which are involved in this are uh, monitoring technologies, optimization technologies, part of it gets manifested in planning and scheduling. So, students should be able to talk about what is process monitoring, how it is done, why it is important. Then planning and scheduling, what is planning and scheduling and how, you know, how in the overall automated factory industrial information technology plays a role in, you know, coordinating, integrating uh, these complex operations for achieving, for squeezing out performance, getting productivity, efficiency to gain an edge of competitiveness in the market. Okay. So, uh, we first take a look at the automation pyramid. Remember, we had taken a look, look at this automation pyramid in the very early parts of the course. Uh, so, here as we said that this is, uh, the automation is, organized, it can be viewed as a pyramid with the process machine the basic equipment at the, which is the ground and then you have the sensors and actuators which take information and provide control inputs. Then you have the first layer of controls, automatic controls and in this course we have uh, mostly been concerned about these two layers. Mm -mm, we will select a thicker pen. So, we have mostly been concerned about these two layers and in this lesson, we will take it, let, take a look at the higher three layers. So, all these layers are basically uh, have different functionality and, and obviously, the higher layers take feedback from the lower layers and they, and they give uh, reference commands or set points or to the lower layers as to what is to be achieved. They, they set the targets for the lower layers and therefore, all this information. So, there is information passing back and forth. So, there is a communication system and we have already learnt about uh, such a industrial communication system. Then there is a special time scale, time scale difference among the layers while the sensors and actuators look only at a part of a machine, but look at it in great time resolution as you go up, we the, la the layers of automation at those levels look at much a 
bigger geographical areas first it talks about you know unit control where one one piece of equipment is looked at then you talk about group level control where groups of equipment are looked at then you can talk about shop level control you can talk about factory level control and so on and finally you can talk about enterprise level control so as you go up your geographical extent goes up and your time resolution or your time scale also goes goes up which means that you don't look at things in on 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 minute time scale but start looking at things in terms of hours hours to days days to weeks sometimes months so when you are doing enterprise level planning and optimization you 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 typically look at you know months of operation while if you are looking at automatic control level then you are typically looking at minutes level or signals at levels of second to minutes right so so we see that this is this is the way complex automation systems are are organized and uh, functionally typically you will find that uh, level 1 and 0 we have seen they are levels 2 1 and 0 actually basically constitute of control systems control systems so they are they talk about they talk about physical dynamics they talk about the physics of the process heat transfer mass transfer signal value so they are you know kind of uh, one kind of technologies so they have been clubbed level 2 1 and 0 they are all control technologies beyond that you have level 3 or the sometimes the systems which or the computing systems which support these the performance here and do the kind of computation that are required are called manufacturing execution systems systems which actually plan production take, take, take a check at resources track how particular uh, how, how the how, i mean how a particular order is being produced take take care of quality etc so such systems are the manufacturing execution systems so they actually basically they are interfaces between the business and the engineering systems so they take on one side the interface with the business systems and take orders i mean production deadlines uh, etc and on the other hand they actually produce they they take these targets from the business systems and they translate them into engineering targets exactly in terms of you know schedules of production which machine to be used at what time and then and, and once these are now give i mean handed down to the supervisory control system then the supervisory control system can act according to that schedule and actually do i mean execute the steps that are required to uh, to 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 do the physical manufacturing right so functionally uh, you can you can have i mean if you see the if you if, if you see the nature of technologies then you will find that this is one nature of technology which are which are which are essentially business systems enterprise resource planning etc on the other hand these systems are still related to the to the to the engineering equipment but look at them as you know behaviorally and just i mean model them in terms of their functionality and their you know some some performance parameters and model the manufacturing process just like a sequence of operations <coughs> while the actual physical entities are, are handled at the control system levels. So this is the way it goes. So we are going to talk about uh, the supervisory control, manufacturing execution and to some extent the business systems today. So if you look at take a brief look at the various uh, levels at the highest level you have a, you have enterprise level systems or business systems where you talk about finances human resources you talk about documentation you talk about long term you know capacity planning whether whether you need to looking at the order or looking at the market whether you need to set up a new plant or you need to acquire a certain kind of machine you you what kind of production goals you want to achieve and these are these are the kind of things that are actually done at at the at the enterprise levels and <coughs> we are going to know, we, this, this is just for our, our our awareness we are not going to be 
uh, we are not experts on this and neither are we going to deal with this in, in a course, but it is good to know that this, this is what the business system does. It, it actually finds out basically it is directly interface to the market and it, it actually finds out that what should be the what should be the you know kind of production uh, production resources and production schedules so that profit can be made. Below that is level 3. So, once these this this enterprise level comes with comes out with orders and provides uh, you know schedules of various I mean the the, the capacities which are going to be available, then the manufacturing level actually sits down and says ok. So, now I have to make so many pieces of this over, over such time with such kind of resources right. So, now how am I going to actually do it? So, when am I going to make what and how am I going to schedule my machines and when I am going to maintain what, when I am going to take off a particular machine and then give it for maintenance. So, all this is done at the manufacturing level. So, typically you know you, you do a, so once you have done that then you know, then you know the exact production sequence and when what will be produced. So, you have a, you have a kind of schedule. Now, you can, you can send this schedule that ok, now you, now everything is fixed up. So, now you produce actually physically produce according to this schedule. <coughs> so, then, then the supervision level actually uh, takes this and so make the, firstly it makes the production that is it, it actually finds out the, the configurations of these machines as they have to be configured for a particular manufacturing and they actually uh, run these machines according to this uh, download download the configurations and then give the proper commands so, such that the machines actually start producing and they also supervise the 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 the, the overall uh, overall overall production process they actually optimize and and deploy control strategies so they actually manage the whole production sometimes it is done sometimes it is done automatically sometimes it is done manually so, when it is done, so you, you so in many cases it is done uh, manually that is using using operators. So, they, they these systems visualize give the operator a view of what is happening in the plant. Uh, they, they also store process data for future use, they, they, they do a lot of documentation which can be used later on for you know quality tracking purposes for process improvement purposes. They actually they actually command several units in a very coordinated fashion such that best volume and quality of production can be reached. So, they coordinate individual groups of machines and they give them appro appropriate set points so that you get products of a certain quality and of a certain volume. And they also handle you know plant emergencies, shutdowns, uh, failures, accidents etcetera. So, they actually manage the production process. Below that you have the actual automatic control in this case referred to as unit control and below that you have the field level where you do sensing and data acquisition since we have done this in detail I am not going to spend time on this. <coughs> <coughs> so, this is a picture which shows that you know in a typically in a process control situation not a not a not a not a discrete manufacturing scenario the kinds of technologies that are used. So, you have uh, and also the time scales that I was talking about. So, you have at the bottom level you have this sensing actuation uh, so protection alarm systems which typically work at sub 1 seconds um, kind of time scales. Then you have the what they call regulatory control or which, which we call automatic control. So, this is this is this is this is kind of you know level 0. then some of it is actually level 1, level 1 <coughs> and then this as we said that you need to give very good set points to these automatic PID loops. So, that is again 
computed by uh, by you know multivariable control models where you consider the interaction among the various variables you, you do what is known as model predictive control is a is a very modern technology which is which is used for using number of process plans so the here you are talking about you know set giving set points which hold for typically for over the over minutes hours kind of horizons and then you have you know you have real time optimizations where real time optimization is is also done at the level of multivariable and constraint control so you have real time optimizations for you know actually <coughs> Uh, for uh, uh, various kinds of, excuse me, I have to switch off my mobile phone. Interruption. So, uh, and then on, finally on top of that you have the planning and scheduling modules which which again as i said that that decides what is to be made and typically work on days months weeks kind of time frames so this 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 is a diagram which shows the various kinds of technologies that, that are used for example for planning scheduling you have to do demand forecasting you have to do supply chain uh, you have to if you know want to know that what sort of uh, What's, what should be a schedule then you have to know what kind of orders are going to come what is your inventory what time does it take to actually procure raw material from the market so th that is that is supply chain management you know raw materials and product planning and scheduling so they, at these various stages you use different different kinds of techniques and there are uh, very advanced software tools today available which actually help you know plant managers uh, take these decisions so uh, so we come to uh, yeah so now we start talking about uh, the various levels and we start with from level 2 so level 2 is supervisory control so the major functions of supervisory control are the following so you have so you first of all optimal set point computation so you when you are so supervisory control is typically concerned about a group a, one machine or a group of machines and they have to be their uh, their 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 operations will have to be coordinated so you have to give them optimal set points so that they um, they can achieve the performance goals of the production like you know typically let us say a supervise i mean a supervision system will let us say they uh, if you take a steel plant then you have a blast furnace feeding to the steel melting shop or the basic oxygen furnace and then basic oxygen furnace feeding to the continuous caster so <clears throat> you need to give set points to to, to all of these for example the continuous caster will have a set point given to it of the casting speed that is at, at, at the speed at which the the slab is going to come out of the caster now obviously that is going to be decided based on the the kind of molten steel supply situation right so the molten steel supply situation depends on the basic oxygen furnace so you see that these the set these these the set points firstly the continuous caster casting speed specification has to be given based on some there are there are some other considerations also like for example that there is a there is a phenomenon called breakout where if you if you if you, if you, if you do not give the proper uh, proper cooling set point i mean cooling system control and uh, and the proper casting speed then sometimes you know you know i mean molten metal can actually come out of the um, come out of the slab and and uh, then you have to stop production and there's a lot of problems right so there are other technical considerations but there are also considerations related to related to uh, coordination among the different units so all this is done by the supervisory control layer similarly one has to do one has to 
supervisory control always looks at the process and sees whether, whether things are going fine. For example, breakout detection as I was saying that whether by looking at the temperature profile, by looking at the mold levels, <coughs> whether it is possible to, I mean the system is always monitored such that whether we can detect the possibility of a breakout and then immediately take corrective action so that breakout does not occur. So, that would be like process monitoring. Similarly, if process reconfiguration and tuning, you know sometimes it happens that you, you need to retune your controllers because, because the process slowly changes or because some, because there may be some, there may be some, uh, there may be some problems with the raw material quality or there may be some problem with the, with some, with some power source like let us say the uh, pressure source may have a, may have a low pressure problem. So, in such cases sometimes you may have to retune your controller such that it gives optimal performance in terms of quality, efficiency, energy efficiency, etc. So, the direct result of monitoring is reconfiguration and tuning as and when necessary. Similarly, sometimes this is done, all this is done manually. So, if it is to be done by operators, then the operator has to be given a very good insight about the things that are happening in the plant, which may be quite far away from the control room. So, there is a process visualization system, man machine interfaces which have to be provided. And similarly, process event management. So, so you know, I mean something trips, some alarm goes, some, 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 some pressure level shoot, shoots up. One has to find, one has to activate strategies, shut down mechanisms, emergency mechanisms such that the situation is managed with the least amount of production loss with safety and reliability to uh, to the personnel and the equipment. You know? So, such things are typically handled at level 2 or these are the functions of the supervisory control. <coughs> so, Essentially, when you are giving a set point, there is an there is an there is an element of optimization involved in this. So, so that that is shown here. That this this is your this is your automatic control loop. You know. So this is your automatic control system. This is your set point. This is the set point. And this is your system, closed loop system. So you always try to find out that. So first of all, you get the data from the process and you actually reconciliate it that is you uh, they may contain noise some sensor may be they, they may be inconsistent because of various reasons. So, first you before making taking decisions you reconciliate the data that this all the signals make sense uh, according to you know standard mass balance energy balance uh, equations of the process. So, once you do that then you have here you have got good data good and valid data. Now, based on that you may like to compute various kinds of you know performance indicators for the process. What is the kind of, what is the production volume, what is the deviation from quality, what is the <coughs> for example, uh, uh, say, say what is the magnitude of the control input that what is the input energy that that, that have been consumed, <coughs> what is the agility of the plan, what is the dynamics that if there is a set point change, what is the process variability. So, various things, various features of, of process operation or pro can be can be computed and based on that you get an idea as to whether your process is is working fine or whether it needs a new set of new, new set points that is uh, another cycle of real time optimization will have to be done to generate new set points. So, this is typically the way in which uh, the, 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 the supervisory system is, is always uh, looking at the plant and then uh, doing I mean carrying out optimizations based on set points. Now, These optimizations can be done in, in, in various ways and I mean finally, you want to minimize cost of production and uh, cost of production generally per unit and you, you as we have talked about in, in our first beginning slide that if you want to make more profit, then I have to cut down on the cost and I have to increase the production. Now, increase the increasing production how far? 
So, that can be limited by typically by two kinds of you know things. Firstly, there are quality constraints. You cannot produce things too fast because then they are going to they may be of may not be of adequate quality. Then there may be production volume constraints that you cannot you do not know how much even if you can meet the quality constraint how much you can produce can actually depend on the, your your equipment capacity how what is this what is uh, how many it can actually produce or it can be restricted by the market because you do not want to produce things which would not sell right. So, <clears throat> so you know typically if you go to a if you go to a I mean this is what I always find that if you go go to a sweet meat shop or some food shop around you know 9 o'clock in the evening you will find that many of the items have been finished. So, they actually schedule their production in such a manner that towards the end of the day it gets exhausted. So, so I mean they won't produce more because because food is a perishable item and and they don't want to they don't want to produce more than they can sell. So, sometimes volume of production can be also constrained by the market. Similarly, where you have very uh, energy intensive processes or where energy is the is the is the main bottleneck like like you know in a let us say an let us say an, anum, an uh, aluminum refining plant say an aluminum refining plant actually you know works on electrolytic principles and it is it is it is highly energy guzzling and it works on electric energy. So, it is so it's that way a very clean plant with where you know literally hundreds of thousands of amperes actually flow through those aluminum pots. And this here the the you know I mean in such a plant production is uh, can sometimes be actually limited by energy because it may be <coughs> and because that that amount of electrical energy some of it typically aluminum plants have uh, their 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 captive generations but, but sometimes they may also drop power from the grid and in which case in especially in developing countries like ours there may be constraints on that so in such a case energy con energy consumption will be a very critical optimization criterion for you know giving set points so similarly minimizing waste through if through effluents so that can be again it can be for example you typically optimize fuel air ratio to save calorific value of unburnt hydrocarbon you, you don't want carbon monoxide to actually uh, escape into the atmosphere because that can be burnt further and you are actually if you if you are escaping carbon monoxide then you are actually losing calorific value of the fuel that you are using that is number one. Number two is that sometimes you may be restricted by you know environmental considerations like you cannot uh, dump acidic or basic uh, effluents into the into rivers right. 